Hello everyone, and welcome to Program Your Life. So when it comes to our chakra system, we know we have different chakras, our heart chakra, our sacral chakra, but one thing we don't realize sometimes is that we can move energy through them. You have the ability to either block your chakras through stress, anger, negative emotions, or you have the ability to open up your chakras through things like meditation, through things like eating healthy, through things like letting that negative energy go. And understanding the chakra system not only allows you to be better in tune with your body and your health, but allows you to understand how energy flows through you truly. You're, you know how to move energy. And when it starts to move and your body does what it does, the nervous system is processing a greater frequency. And we, we saw in our brain scans that when people relax into it, the brain goes into a very, very high state, a lot of microvolts of energy. And many times, the brain waves that are carrying that energy are delta. Let's start with a brief review of the anatomy and physiology of your brain and body. Each one of these individual energy centers of the body have their own frequency, they carry their own message or their own intent because all frequency carries information, they have their own individual consciousness, they have their own glands, their own hormones, and their own chemistry, as well as their own individual little brains. Now, the sexual glands or the sexual organs are related to the first center, the digestive glands, the second center, the adrenal glands, the third center, the heart and the thymus, the fourth center, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands, the fifth center, the pineal gland, the sixth center, and the pituitary gland, the seventh center. In addition to having their own hormones and glands and chemistry, they have their own individual little brains inferior mesenteric plexus, superior mesenteric plexus, solar plexus, or what we call celiac plexus, heart plexus, thyroid plexus, pineal gland, and pituitary gland. And each one of these individual plexuses of nerves is a cluster of neurons that would be like an individual brain. And whenever energy is moving into neurological tissue, we begin to create mind. So think about this. When energy moves into your first center, a certain set of glands, hormones, and chemicals are released, and it begins to produce its own energy. And when energy is activating that neurological tissue, that center has its own individual mind. By the same means, when you're reacting to someone or something in your life, or you have to use your will to overcome certain circumstances in your life, you activate and put energy in your third center, you begin to secrete certain hormones and chemicals, as well as different glands becoming activated. And this center then has energy in it, and when the neurological tissue becomes activated, this center has a mind of its own. By the same means, when energy moves into your heart, you tend to be more loving more selfless, more giving, more caring, more trusting, more creative, because it has its own consciousness. And when energy moves into the center, we behave in different ways. What most people don't know is that all of these energy centers of your body are under the control of the autonomic nervous system. Now remember, autonomic means automatic. In other words, the autonomic nervous system is part of the brain called the limbic brain. And its job then is to automatically take care of balance and equilibrium in the body. It controls blood sugar levels, hormone levels, it controls body temperature. And all of that takes place beyond the conscious mind. I want to review something very simple. We have a tremendous amount of energy that exists in our first center. Think about this. There's enough energy in the first center of a human being or many mammals to create life. Most people have been programmed into believing that energy can go in one direction, that we release that energy out. But now let's take a journey up the spine, all the way to the brain. When energy is activated in the first center, that's creative energy. And when that energy can move into the second center, if we feel safe in our environment, 
and there's food and there's shelter and there's protection and there's family and we have networks energy naturally moves into the second center and this center is about consumption elimination metabolism breaking down food homeostasis and balance now when the environment becomes unsafe and we perceive a threat or a danger some challenging situation energy moves into the third center and now we need our will and we need some power become empowered to overcome the conditions in our environment if we're successful in overcoming those conditions energy naturally moves into the fourth center and we love our life a little bit more we love ourselves a little bit more we feel more whole we feel more complete we feel more present and of course we have to then express our greatest understanding we have to express our greatest expression of love or truth and energy moves into this center if we can articulate and explain that greatest understanding, energy will move into the sixth center and latent systems of the brain will begin to become activated and we will begin to broaden our spectrum of reality. In other words, we'll begin to see more the way the reality really is. Some veil or some conditioning will be released. And if energy makes it to the sixth center, it'll move into the seventh center and it will begin to create harmony and balance in all of these individual centers. And then there's another center right above the head. The Egyptians called it the Ka, and we'll call that the eighth center. And when energy moves all the way up to the top of the brain, if we feel worthy enough to receive, now all of a sudden now we open this eighth center, and opening that eighth center allows the door for us to begin to download information from the field or from the cosmos. You won't see 200 standard deviations outside of normal in many neuroscience studies because it's just, it's just so outside of the normal. But we've measured it over and over again. In fact, we can predict when it's going to happen. We were just looking at this person's beautiful, really organized theta. Well, when we see that, we know that theta is going to carry gamma. We just know it. And we just know that that person's so coherent, so orderly, that they're harmonics. They're, they're frequencies that build on other frequencies, and that's exactly how the energy centers work. They're frequencies that build on frequencies. So as you're blessing your energy centers and resting your attention in different one of those spaces and the space around, not only are you creating coherence in here, but by in addition to that, as you connect them, your act of becoming conscious and connecting and aligning and attuning and feeling it move is creating the very neurological networks to invite the experience to ha happen automatically, naturally. And as you begin to open this pathway, energy will begin to shift. And the blockage of energy, you will feel as a sensation in your body. And you'll feel it as like a, a, like a pit in your gut or a heavy heart. That's the body out of balance and it's a feeling. And many people were talking about this at dinner last night, the team leaders were saying, well, some of my people, they don't, they, they don't even know what the emotion is. They can't name what they want to move out of their body. They don't, they don't know the emotion. And I said, well, forget the emotion. What is the feeling they feel when they feel it? Do they have a pit in their gut? Do they have a heavy heart? Do they have soreness or, or heat or whatever it is? Just, just come up with a sensation. And when you have a bunch of sensations in your body, like you're feeling like uh, irritated and hot and you feel your heart racing. The accumulation of those sensations or feelings is called an emotion. Now you name it as um, anger or frustration. Welcome back, everyone. So when it comes to our chakras, know that if there's an imbalance in one of them, then there's going to be some dis-ease. There's going to be some issues. Holding on to hate, holding on to anger, holding on to resentment, guilt, all that things can hurt your heart chakra. So understanding how to move energy, where that energy comes from, can do amazing things in your life. So we give names to emotions, but they're really just physiological sensations of the body many times being out of balance. So all of this incoherence, when it starts getting orderly, starts getting more coherent, begins to allow energy to build on the previous center and build on the previous center and build on the previous center. And when those centers are aligned and attuned, you have a very coherent, healthy body. And people who have done this work in blessing the energy centers, they're in this room. 
They've healed themselves of all kinds of crazy health conditions that the doctors had no solution for. People who have chronic bladder infections or prostate conditions or any condition in any one of these lower centers. Ovarian uh, tumors. <laughs> the energy starts to move or there's balance in these centers doing the breath and beginning to disturb that energy. As that energy begins to unwind, it just becomes pure energy that wants to go back from whence it came to the brain as a thought. And so fear that's stored in the body can turn into freedom in one second. It's the movement of energy, and you will feel it. And many times when you do this properly, people pass out. It's happened to me thousands of times. And they come up to the stage and they say, I passed out. And I say, I've been telling you that it could happen to you. You're doing it right. What? Yeah, that's a lot of energy. I see a flash of light, and then I don't remember. It's energy moving into your brain. In the beginning, it scares people because they don't know what they're losing control. But that's a, that's a good squirt of energy making it into your brain. Now, then the body will adapt because it'll be able to process a greater frequency. But when it first happens, it scares a lot of people because it's just raw energy moving back. So, gamma happens when there's an enormous amount of energy or release into the brain. Gamma happens at times, even when you open your heart, you'll see spurts of gamma. When I say certain words, when we're doing a meditation, I can say a certain word and the brain scientists can tell you we could have 14 people having their brain scanned and they all go into gamma at the same time, all of them, because they're associating those words. And that's exactly what I want to have happen. So we have facilitators and we study that we study the best way to communicate. But building the model with gamma and different frequencies, that's, uh, it, it's better for you to look at a light spectrum. You know, the whole spectrum of light from the slowest radio waves all the way up to gamma waves and cosmic waves and turn it this way and it would be closer to the frequencies that the body processes in those centers. Welcome back everyone. It's amazing to really realize that you can move energy, that you can use energy to make yourself healthy again, to create abundance, and to be in tune with your body. And that's the most important thing. I would say that out of everything we need good health. Without good health, you can't really do much. But understanding good health comes to understanding the chakra system, understanding everything from your crown all the way down to your sacral chakra. Understanding that all of these energy centers, head, the heart, everywhere, have their own energy flowing through it. And when there's a blockage, when there's a disconnect, that's when we tend to experience dis-ease. But by moving that energy, we can start to create those better circumstances for health we want in our life. Hope this was helpful to you. If it was, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next video.